What is up, lads, and welcome to another episode of the Pez Universe podcast. My name is the Midnight Kid. Tonight we are joined again by my co-host. He's to my right over here. I think it is Weza FC. To my top right, we have a man that needs no introduction in the Pez scene, especially in the eleven v eleven and the three v three. It is Mr. Laza the Greek. What's up, Laza? And you can see he's ripping. He's 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 doing a bit of paid promotion work today, just to put that in there. But... <laughs> I was saying that the comments. Yeah, man. No, we have to be we have to be very clear, you know, that he is doing a bit of Pez twenty. He's actually promoting Pez twenty twenty. Um, yeah, so... he's more in it. Right, yeah. again, see you all. Prime candidate for it. <laughs> and above me here, we have KG from Operation Sports, all the way from the States. So appreciate you coming on, man. A lot of the guys will know you uh, from your articles and stuff covering Pez over the last couple of years. So, and of course, from the podcast and stuff as well. So, delighted to get you on and have a chat about all things e football. Yeah, you man. Can't say Pez. Now, appreciate so it, man. Appreciate the invite. Yeah, man. And thanks Excited. for taking the time Excited as well. I know it's the time Pez. difference. It's not, it's, it's not easy. So, appreciate it um Anytime. i mean wes we're gonna jump straight in this is kind of a a can before the storm I, I suppose podcast because we still don't know anything concrete i suppose for for gamescom it's not out yet there's been you know yeah. we still have modes that we don't know what they're going to be called we still have no clear direction on you know what's going to happen what's going to be released we do have uh, and i think to start off the podcast we are going to cover the the interviews that were done and the information that dropped over the last couple of couple of um couple of days um at time of recording this so the biggest one was probably on the loadout website or that loadout website that we saw uh which kind of talked about a lot of stuff that i don't know why it didn't come out officially like maybe they were waiting to kind of put it out through different channels i don't know why you know with no disrespect to the website or anything it's not that but it was just there was a lot of good information in there that a lot of people still haven't kind of i suppose copped on to that information because it hasn't come out officially and everything is questioned and it's like well why didn't it come out officially blah 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 blah. as you can see like on twitter every time people still don't understand you know how e-football is going to work this year you know that's the thing that i get questioned on a lot um but yeah, I mean, we're just going to start there because that's probably the newest information that we have. We saw a lot of information on like that it was going to be built for next gen. They kind of doubled down on that, that it was going to be built for next gen, that it was going to be downscaled per device, per performance for device and all that sort of stuff. I mean, like, Wes, I'll let you kind of give an overview of the stuff or the lads want to chip in as well. Like what what about the interview that stuck out for you that that you were excited about or... Are you just kind of a bit bemused as to, you know, why this information came out the way it came out, or like what what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think I think it kind of again is, has kind of been a pretty much a through kind of thread through the last kind of three or four podcasts is it, it, it's communication that it always boils down to with Konami, whether it is official communication or if it's going through websites or it's going through just stuff that essentially it kind of felt like it was kind of just snuck in through the back door. It was kind of like well, we'll release this out. We won't really give it any fanfare. We'll let everybody else try and find it, and then we'll let everybody else try and figure it out. Mm. Whereas, again, that could be taken in two ways. Either they're not wholly confident in what they have, or they might just be going, hey, actually, we just going to give you a little bit, and we're going to keep drip-feeding you, and then we're att- potentially going to hit you at Gamescom with something mm. big. What I kind of read into, and again, it, it's not through a kind of a conspiracy level or anything like that, but it was when you were talking there about the, the kind of the, well, it measures through downgrades and it measures through kind of different devices and things, was that ultimately, uh, I think it was, is it Kimura? No, I just want to make sure I get his name correct. And I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, not throwing sh- I'm not throwing shade at the gentleman because the guy has a job. <laughs> like the, jo- the guy is just doing a job. But it's like, he was like, well, you know what? The engine is fundamentally the same between... Uh, between mobile and console, which was fine to clarify, which is great. But then when he was like, oh, we've, 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 we've focused on gameplay enhancements and then proceeds to list stuff that isn't necessarily gameplay related. It's more <laughs> aesthetic. It's more, mm-hmm. hey, we've got fans that are jumping up and down the stand or the, the t- grass textures are different mm. or, you know, these different... And I'm like, okay, that's fine, but those, those, are, those are aesthetics. Those are visuals. They're not gameplay fundamentals they're not how does the passing mechanics work how does the collision system work have they sorted out the shooting mechanics have they sorted out the goalkeepers have they you know have they sorted out the flow of the game mm. like i know that they made mention to yeah we've got any esther and pk on board and things like that but it wasn't really clear what value that they have added to the game as a whole 
So I think ultimately, I think it, we're kind of as much as it is great that they've put information out there. I still feel as though we are pretty much in the same situation we kind of were before. I don't know how the guys feel, but that kind of that's kind of my my take on it really at this point. Hmm. And KG, I'll let you jump in there because you're. You're kind of a student of the game in, in that you go into a lot of detail in your posts. I love reading your stuff because you really Thank you, man. Thank get you. down to the, the nitty gritty, you know, that's, uh, and the thing I found about Pez is that like, especially this year, like there's so many people that don't understand the new platform and like that, that this is going to be like for all intents and purposes, like a game as a service, you know what I mean? Like, like Fortnite where it's going to be like it's not done in like a six to nine month development um mm-hmm. like platform now where you have to get the game shipped and distributed and all that it's this is going to be like a live kind of game now that's going to be updated every six yeah. months or whatever so like what like what what do you think about everything just to get your initial impressions on everything now that we have that information out yeah i mean i, I gotta definitely agree with wes in that the communication is just all over the place mm. Right, you're you're getting more information from these outside sources, like like you mentioned, uh, Bear. You mentioned loadout. Mm. So the loadout had three of the most recent articles about you know about e football and about the haptics and you know and stuff that we'll probably get into in a little bit later. Yeah. But why isn't why isn't that stuff coming right from Konami? Mm. Like that's what your Twitter, that's what your Facebook page that they used to have what last year or the year before to collect feedback. That's what that stuff is there for. Right. So it's they're they're dropping the ball immediately when it comes to just giving folks information about their product. Mm. And we all know we've we've played Pez for a long time. We know how the rumors and we know how, you know, those kind of things just take off within the Pez community. Right. It's a it's Pez is a small it's a smaller niche community. Right. Mm. You know, you've got your FIFA folks out there you've got your your other major games and things like that but you know that's one of the best things about Pez. it's always seemed like a small close-knit community right you and then with you guys doing all the, the great work with Pez universe and editing all the option files and things like that you create that kind of that feel like you're actually a part of of making mm-hmm. this game and taking it to the next level so right there from the start that communication is just it, it's been terrible by konami but you know in kind of fairness to say it's been consistent throughout throughout the years when it comes to Konami and just marketing their game and how and you know we're we're almost kind of used to it at, at some point but at the same time like you see what EA is doing and you you know you see what some of these other companies are doing with just in depth articles deep dives pitch notes and things like that and you're like okay cool this these are all gameplay things and like Wes was saying the stuff that they've released you know hasn't really been too much stuff about gameplay yeah they've talked about the core engine being um mainly based off of the next gen and things like that but then you know they talk about a lot about how it's going to be scaled to each Mm. platform that you're playing on and it just i I just have a lot of questions about how you know a company like konami and pez that's just been so i don't want to say poor but they've just been lackluster when it comes to staying ahead of the curve from a technology standpoint right online servers have always been a little iffy the connections the matchmaking and just all that stuff that comes with you know, next gen gaming and taking gaming online, which is the the platform that they want, and tying it all together between, mm. you know, Laz could be on his on his uh on, on his phone playing me on my PS5. How you know how is yeah. that going to work? Yeah. You know, what are the experiences going to be like? And things like there's just so many just questions that I have that just aren't related to actual gameplay and and improvements upon PES 2021 and or 2020 that just kind of you know that that just kind of have me just just speculating and just very very curious about what's coming up but getting back to your original point Barry I do like the the freedom that having a, an open platform brings because it takes away a lot of the development time frames mm. and cycles and things yeah. like that so you're you're rushing to meet a certain time frame and we've seen this in the past with Konami with where they'll drop new um, new partnerships or new teams after they did it with Celtic Park a few years ago um, with yeah. Rangers, with, with the Ebrox. Um, and they just add, you know, they've done it all, all the time with the Euros. They'll add the updated um, stadiums or, or in the case of the World Cup, they'll add the, all the Russian stadiums that they did in 2018. So we, we've seen that they've, you know, they've kind of said, you know what, screw you, these deadlines, we'll, we'll get it out to you when we can in the mm-hmm. past. But now that just opens, it just opens it up completely with just, 
you know, you're at the, we're at the whim and at the mercy of, of Pez and Konami, you know, saying that, hey, early autumn, this mode is going to come out or, you know, late winter, this mode is going to come out. And you're just like, all right, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll hold you to it. But at the end of the day, we know that, you know, history will probably repeat itself in this case. So, mm. you know, I, I'm curious, I, I'm trying to keep a, a positive, you know, mind frame about all of this. <laughs> and it, it's kind of hard because, you know, we were kind of sold on that next gen Unreal Engine 4 mock-up of Messi in the trailer and everyone's just like, holy crap, like that looks incredible. Mm. And then we've seen some of the stuff that the Unreal Engine can do. And then they drop that trailer and you're just like, uh, what? Hold on. That looks nothing <laughs> like what I saw two, three months ago. So like what, what's going on? So I don't know. I, I, I'm curious, like I said, I'll try to keep a, keep an open mind about things, but you know, I, I don't, I don't begrudge anyone that thinks differently, mm. you know, or has a different opinion. So, you know, I'll take it. We'll see. We'll see how it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, the different opinions. Yeah, we're going to get yeah. that different opinion. Yeah, that's a good segue <laughs> into Laza because Laza has been, I mean, one of the more positive guys in, in the community. And somebody like that, that, like, yeah, I mean, like, we all love Pez. I think that's, like, yeah. that's the thing. I, a, lot of, a lot of the frustration comes from having an attachment to it. And, like, when you spend hours doing something, it's like following a sports team or something. It's like when it's yeah. when it's going good, it's brilliant. But when they're bad, you don't switch teams. You know what I mean? You just kind of stick it out, yeah. and it can Ride be it frustrating. Out. It can be frustrating. Yeah, I mean that's it. You can be frustrating sometimes. I mean, we're talking to a Villa fan here beside us, so I mean, we'll, we'll get, get into, uh, we'll get into that at the end. Don't worry. I got plenty. Don't you worry. You got Leon Bailey. Yeah. No, you, got I, the, you got the great. I, I got a lot of stuff to talk about later. Don't you worry. We'll talk about transfers near the end, but Laza, I mean. Just to bring you in, because, like, I mean, you love Pez, but at the same time, like, you you know, you, me and you have spoken a lot, and you have, you know, you know the issues that are there, obviously, in every game. Every game has issues, but, like, what we know so far, like, Pez is going to be changing a lot from what it's been for the last couple of years, since you've kind of burst onto the scene playing competitively, playing a lot of hours of Pez. Like, what are your thoughts on the new direction? Well... I think just to come back to the point that both Weza and KG made, which I agree with both of them, is the fact that we know that PES is gone. We know that there's a new brand name into it. And as you know, we know we all have the same hype and we all expect something positive. But then at the same time, do we have do we all have the same fear that we're gonna see the same thing again over mm-hmm. the past years? And um, I think it's a new approach which does give me especially a massive hype. Uh, but I think I'm kind of I'm I'm probably gonna put myself in that group of fans that um, are gonna say okay so we we've got the same things again and again and again things are not changing you know um, we mention things we we believe that things are gonna change things are not changing um, as as the years progress and you know with e football uh, you know we'll be free for all more users more platforms we're gonna explore ways that we've never seen before it's a completely new path that. It's like, it's almost you're walking into a door that you don't know what's behind that mm. door, you know? It, it, it's something completely new for everyone. And again, I'm, I'm just a person that I love the game and, and no matter what, I'll, I'll still play. That's why I always say, you know, playing is believing, no matter what. It, it, it's a game that, paid every time whether you like it or not, you know, just, you know <laughs> takes, you takes the stress away. No, it is, it is, you know? You're just like, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, with... Just to come back to you, Barry, especially with a competitive scene. I mean, being a competitor for uh, for the past three years, and you know, being part of and know players that are comp- competing in, mm. in high level in uh, in e football. Um, we were. I, I do think we want to see uh, new kind of um, uh, esports competitions, a new strategy, a new season. Yeah. You know, more mm. ways to qualify. Uh, will they bring back? Offline, you know, because now with with a pandemic around, it will be very very difficult. And we've seen it's not causing issues just with uh, with PES, but for other games as well. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's just I think everyone is expecting changes, and uh, all I can say is just time will tell. Mm. And like, what what do you make? Like, what do you think about the fact that like you're no longer you know going to be able to go into a, a game store and like get PES on release day? You know, like that. It, like. I think I I don't think the penny has dropped for a lot of people the new direction. Mm-hmm. I think people still don't understand that like 
this is going to be like the way it is i just and i think that that's been a mixture of like the mixed confusing messaging like you know i have people messaging me daily like oh you know like when will pez 2022 option file be out and it's like like there's literally no edit mode at launch like you know that's that's already yeah. been said out like you know but people yeah. don't understand mm -hmm. and it's not their fault you know it's different mm -hmm. for us we're ingrained in the community we know yeah. when a small like you know tidbit of news drops we're on it like you know we're dissecting it and we're fans of football games it's like putting a drop of blood yeah. in the ocean for a shark but, that, yeah, but that, that, that's <laughs> it i mean but for the casual guy i mean they don't mm -hmm. know which like they don't know you know anything really that's going on until the game is out so like laza for you i mean is that is that something that like excites you that it like you're saying there and we've all said it for years you know pez needs to change like it needs to like this is in my opinion the more i think about this like this is as big as move as konami could have made i think like that i don't think people even expected them to do something this crazy because being honest right i'll be honest they they released the game last year as an update and it was one of the most successful releases that they had right because mm -hmm. people bought five versions of the same game to get i you know iconic moment players and stuff which fair enough that's their decision they could have released another season update this year people would have gave out about a complaint and they still would have ordered five versions of the game if there was iconic moments i mean that's just being realistic like so i think this is a huge step for them that they can't really go back from now but like for you laza you're saying there that you know we need a change like nothing has really changed in the last couple of years with the game modes i mean we're getting changed this year like i mean in a yeah, huge way yeah. i mean like I, what do you think, think what do you think about that like that it's going to be like have you sat down and actually processed that it is going to be so different or are you just still kind of like to be honest with you it's still too much to take in <laughs> i'm just i'm just at the level where i'm i'm just excited for what to come but when everything drops and you know we have it's available to us mm. once we evaluate and see all the possible ways that we can we can you know we can navigate in the game will it work will it be the same you know because i mean you know you could be a player where you you're expecting a great game you you know you get the game you play the game and then you're like i was not expecting this mm. then from from that point and you know on to on towards the next season what what's what's the plan of 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 a uh, of a player who plays pest that's the thing yeah yeah there's a lot of questions and i mean like ways for for someone like you who's since we've kind of brought back the podcast like we have talked i think more about fifa than than ever i think we've been very i think we've been very like straight down the middle with like football games at the moment and like yeah. you know we're at an age now i think we all are apart from laza who's still a young a young pop there you know a young stallion <laughs> but like we're at an age where and i know this sounds like kind of you know like old-fashioned way of thinking but like time is kind of more precious when you're a bit older and you've got a lot of responsibilities yeah. and you know yeah. you've got things like not saying that your time isn't precious now laza don't get offended but <laughs> like you still have you've, you've a you have a lot of time ahead of you but like for us it's you know you can get jaded like with with a series and you can get jaded with like you know the same rigmarole every year where it's like you know yeah. this is going to change and it doesn't change or this is this doesn't need to be changed and like with this nobody asked for mobile and that sort of stuff and it's been kind of like forced on people now we don't still don't know how it's going to work as laza said it could be it could be amazing like this could usher in the future of sports games like it could it could you know what i mean that it's so accessible to everybody same as going out kicking a ball outside you know all you need is a is a ball you can you know you don't need goal yeah. posts you can put down a couple of jumpers and stuff like this could open up like an actual football game where you don't need 60 70 quid you know to buy it like you know what i mean so mm -hmm. but like for you Wes, i mean like what like what is it about pez that is like like why can't like what is in your opinion that hasn't like has made you like more nervous compared to like fifa is it just that fifa is like kind of does what it says on the tin that it's like there, there's no unknowns with it or it, like what is it about fifa for you that like separates the two of them so to speak I think it's the ability to keep the game fresh. Yeah, it's it's content. The fact that I yeah, it, con content is one. Uh, online stability to some degree is mm. two. The the fact that again you can you can if you want to properly earn your way through the game, 
and you don't have to rely on microtransactions. Mm. But yes, yeah, sure, there are FIFA points. Yes, we've mentioned about the preview packs who have been a great addition to to FIFA. But you know, when it comes to eFootball, it's coin only agents or it's coin only legends or it's oh come and get your Nakamura, but he's behind a a paywall where you have to basically get lucky with a random number generator and see what happens. Mm. I think I think the main takeaway for me this year going forward was is that last year I made a very kind of I'd say a private decision that became public quite apparent, which was, you know, I didn't do the whole like, oh, do you know what, I'm not playing it anymore. I didn't do the big long social media posts. I literally just went, do you know what, I'm playing it anymore. That's mm. it. So mm. I'll take a season out and we'll see what happens next year. Because I saw the teaser, I was like, okay, benefit of the doubt. I played 2021 for a couple of months, realized it was relatively the same game. I just went, okay, push that to the side. Let's try something new. Mm. Uh, and and like I said, the the jet, you know. It's it's no secret that I don't like the direction they're going. Mm. I understand it, yeah. but I don't like it. Um, I think what is happening at the moment is conducive of essentially isolating your offline player base because you know you're looking at winter before you get master league mm. and even become a legend if that is even a thing at this. Yeah, point. they haven't really said mm. under all map. You yet. know, winter is coming. And, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It's the, the White Walkers have bust through the wall. <laughs> uh, like they have actually bust through the wall, guys. Like we are actually going to have to go north here, right? <laughs> but that's 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 but that's you know like a, and I've said previously before, and you know I could hammer the point, mm-hmm. you know, to death. I, you know, I may not be an offline player anymore, but I sure as hell feel it for the offline players because mm. you know the likes of people who we've had on this podcast, you know, the true Brits, Spoonie. You know, the likes of content creators like Pez Story Mode, players who go and have specific things that they do in Master League don't have that option yeah. for the first six months of the game. If you're Laza, not not taking it deliberately him, but it's because he's not online, <laughs> he's, he's solely online. If you're Laza or you're Laza's dad or you're, uh, you're, you know, you're any of the content creators who are solely online, so Sep, uh, Vern, uh, it's David Fish, any of those guys, those guys are calm. Because my club is going to be there pretty much after, just after their, you know, their first thing that comes out, which is essentially yeah. a demo. They're cool. They're, they're taken care of. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Your offline players, though, are essentially shafted mm. until, you know, January potentially. You know, you know, somebody said to me jokingly before, winter could even be March. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. To think... To think that on release that your offline player base, bearing in mind that you know the quotes that we've seen is that we've been preparing for this for two years, we've been preparing for this for this transition. If you've been preparing it for two years, when that Master League DLC drops, that's premium downloadable content, you better make sure that that is the best damn Master League that there's ever been. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there's going to be there's going to be loads of social media tweets where you know you can't delete stuff from the internet once it's hit it. So all these quotes that come back of you know, the direction of pairs and, you know, this is what we've been planning for for two years. If it's a copy and paste job, not saying it is because I'm not an insider, folks, but if it is a copy and paste job of what we've seen before, there is going to be an offline player base that will just go, eh, that's mm, it, done. Yeah. Especially when you've seen what has come out through, as, as KG pointed out, the deep dives and the career mode stuff that mm-hmm. has come out for FIFA, which is essentially just taking anything you could think of with pairs and he's just going, yep, we see that. Let's just do a better version of it, mm. and that's what and that's what's <laughs> happening right now. You're mm. getting outdone. Yeah. You're getting outdone on the stuff that made your game what it is, and now that you're kind of turning to this model of, well, we're just going to cater to my club. We're just going to cater cater to you know uh, you know fan bases that are primarily online. That's fine, mm-hmm. but you need to have replayability. For example, let's just you know argue the toss here. If the servers go down on eFootball before the DLC is out. What, what are they going to do? Because mm. yeah. what, what, modes, what modes have you got? Offline you've got, what, you're going you're gonna, to you're play an yeah. exhibition against the AI. Yeah. yeah. What about the weekly maintenance that Pez always, that Pez always <laughs> yeah. has? Yeah. Where yeah, just, like, they just shut it down online yeah. for what, like six six hours, six to eight hours? Like, yeah. yeah. It's just like, it's like what are you, you going to do? If the servers go down or if something mm. breaks, what are you going to do? Because yeah. you ain't going to have traffic coming through your game. They're going to go, sweet. Oh, oh, FIFA's yeah. out. Oh, okay, sweet. We'll jump yep. on that. I mean, a lot of people that I've seen are over my timeline, yes, we have an isolated pool of it because, you know, you only see what's on your timeline. A lot of people have pre-ordered it already. A lot yeah. of people have already pre-ordered FIFA and going, do you know what? I'm looking forward to getting involved in Korea because this looks amazing. Mm. And if yeah. they deliver on 10% of what they've said that they're going to deliver on, 
it, all of this offline player base that they keep saying, oh, do you know what? We're going to have you sorted in, in Master League. They're going to be back for Master League in January, February or March or winter. They're yeah. not going to be back for that. They're going to go sweet. I'm going to see all this fully licensed stuff mm-hmm. where I've got to create my own club and create this, do this and do that and do the other. I ain't coming back. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's a missed opportunity. But then, of course, that could potentially play into people's hands. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's... Yeah, I, I, I think the, the major the major criticisms that are there are, are warranted. What we, you know, I know that some people go, oh, come on, Wes. Come on, be a bit positive about it. I'm like, okay, if they give me something <laughs> to be positive about, I will be positive. Like, there is, mm-hmm. like, I will not kick them if they go, by the way, we put, we've sort all of these issues out and this is the greatest game ever made. I'll happily come back on the podcast and be, yo, this is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Until then, I'm gonna keep up the pressure. I'm gonna be keep beating the drum. Like, yeah. There is no, there's no let up here. Like, yeah, exactly. There's no let up. You've got, you've got Where's to keep the pressure. Where's believe it, buddy? Hey, you can throw, you can throw slogans at me all you want, man. It, it don't, it don't matter to me. I, I've become, I've become nullified to a hype train. I got not, you know, there's been, yeah. there's only so many times you get caught out before you go. Do you know what? Just show me. And that's mm-hmm. why I'm hoping that we get out of Gamescom. I hope they show us gameplay. I hope they show us yeah, this. I mean, they have to. Oh, really. by the way, there's, here's, here's what's representative on a PS5 versus a PS5. Yeah. That's what I want to see. I want to see do that you level. think? Do you think they show us anything before Gamescom? Because Gamescom's, what, August 25th through the 25th, 27th, around, yeah. around yeah. those dates? Yeah. And I know, I know Adam on, on Twitter said, you know, he kind of teased the head. Yeah, it was like, it was like late August. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah, late yeah. August. So, so, yeah, I mean, if you're going to try and get a buzz for pre-Gamescom, mm-hmm. if I was in the box seat, you drop a little bit beforehand to go, by the way, yeah. here's the stuff here. We're going to further explain it at Gamescom. Mm. And I dropped what something they... marquee. Drop something marquee. Drop something where it's like, by mm. the way, here's our weekly competition system for like esports sealers. That's okay. the route they're wanting to go. Drop mm. something major like that to go, by the way, here's how our esports are going to work. Or here's a here's a teaser of how Master League is gonna look. Because then you suddenly get all of this offline player base that go, Oh god, actually they're considering us now. Oh brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's what you get you have to get people back on side. That's that's like that's a good a good old school Whedon's Master League trailer <laughs> reveal would be like that's that's what we need right now. That's what the, yeah. the, get it, get it, the get it back for getting needs back. right now. <laughs> Getting back for a last dance, that's what you need. Uh-huh. You need. We, we just that's that's for a last that. dance. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, but like it is, it is, I just think as you're saying there, like, you know, we we still kind of romanticize, you know, Pez and stuff by saying, you know, stuff like that. And it's it's not to put a downer on it, but I just think that Pez has been slowly moving, like, mm-hmm. it's been slowly shifting in a, like, completely different direction that like it is mad to think and i was just i was just think i was just talking with one of the lads the other day about this and i was like imagine thinking back to like pez five or six right and i don't want to go down this like this train of talk because we could be here for five hours right <laughs> but like when you think back to pez four five and six and it's like you know you could you could look 10 years into the future and just look at the technology that would be available look at the online infrastructure yeah. that was be, that would be available and say mm-hmm. oh my god i mean like i can't wait remember, till like 10 years time when like pez 20, pez 2016 is out how yeah, yeah, much yeah. better it's going to be compared to what we're playing now and it's like mm-hmm. i think online has just completely like like stopped that, focus, yeah, kinda. stopped that development yeah. completely because you're even here now that like it's very hard right it is extremely hard to go back to playing against the ai right when you're used yeah, to yeah. beating a guy online and you mm-hmm. know you have the little like last minute goal or you have that feeling where it's like i'm after beating somebody else sitting on another console halfway across the world yeah mm-hmm. fucking get in you know what i mean like there is a <laughs> sense of comfort, <laughs> and, like laza will probably tell you that i mean like there is a bit of a buzz off it you know yeah. like any online oh, game yeah. that you play right oh, now yeah. i'm not saying yeah. i'm a massive master league fan but i think that like the numbers of people playing like online like are just so big nowadays with every game you know that comes which out is, you know what i mean like yeah, it's just yeah, completely is, changed you know the, and, the vision that konami had was definitely in, like Wes said i don't i don't like it hmm. because i'm a more of an offline player although i do love to play some of my buddies online um but it, it's just that's just the dynamic of games now right yeah. like even like a couple of years ago konami was putting out modes 
where they were like local play only. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like, it's 2019, it's 2020. Yeah. Like yeah. no one's sitting next to me on the couch playing a game with yeah. me anymore. Yeah. No, it's no going to be is. my buddy in, in this part of the world or this part of the, the States. That's, that's the focus. Yeah. Like that's yeah. what they should have been doing. And like, like you were saying, Barry, they just, it, it seems like we should be further along mm. at this particular point in time, but yeah, I mean, I think this this year is like bringing in, you know, if this, I think why people are so like not upset but kind of like shocked and like disappointed. If you are a Master League fan, is that like, mm -hmm. it, you know, it was it was people were just thinking like an Unreal Engine built Master League, and to go oh. from that to be a free to play, yeah. my club centric like game. From what we know so far, I mean, like this time next year, we could be sitting here with the best Master League. Pez has ever had or eFootball has ever had. Yeah. We don't know that. Master League Online. Yeah, that's what that's the future. That's what we need. We need it bridges it bridges the gap between offline folks and then it also attracts some of the online folks into Master League. So I could you you know so Wes could use his his beloved Aston Villa and try to pry Grealish back from from the, <laughs> the evil. No, no, they, you can keep him as far away. Uh, he's as done. As he's, as he's burnt that bridge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and 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 you know, and folks like Laza who like to play online can still get that one v one type of thing, you know, type of satisfaction that the AI yeah. can never kind of satisfy. You know, the AI can never scratch that that itch of just the playing another human and having someone else thinking in real time and yeah. messing with tactics and knowing their players and things like that. You know, scripting aside and all that good stuff. To me, some of the other sports games have done it. NBA 2K has done it. Mm. Some of the older EA sports games have done it. I thought when Konami first introduced Master League Online way, like, what, four, five, what? six, seven years ago? Yeah. That, that... 15, wasn't it? Yeah. That was yeah, some... back at... yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I was playing it 2011 because that was the FIFA that was broken. Oh, online. MLO, sorry. That... My yeah. club was 2015, yeah. I think. Yeah, my club, yeah, my club, 20... my club was 2015. MLO was 2011, <laughs> just... yeah, as far as I know. And, you know, and just kind of, just, just bring those two fan bases together. Cause you know, I talk a lot, I play a lot of FIFA too, mainly like online, like pro clubs and things like that. And the two bases aren't that far apart. The mm -hmm. online competitive crowd, you know, the folks that, that play like last, like last plays, you know, you watch them play and they're not the folks doing, you know, all the skill videos and all those kind yeah. of tricks. Like they're actually trying to use their football knowledge to win the game, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, yeah. at certain, certain situations, situations it calls for you to do step overs and you know things like just like it does in real life but they're trying to win you know win the game and and using their 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 stick skills you know the, the skill gap and then also their football knowledge of all right you know they're 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 packing the midfield maybe i need to go a little bit wider with my formation and try to you know spread them out maybe use some advanced instructions and things like that mm. they're they're not we're not that far apart um it's just it's just folks both Konami and EA are kind of guilty of appeasing or appealing to one side and then kind of neglecting the other side, maybe throwing the other yeah. side a couple of couple of bones here and there. Like, yeah. hey, look what we did in career mode this year. Mm. You know, never mind. The ultimate team pitch dot or, or deep dive pitch notes is going to come out tomorrow and it'll probably be like 20 pages long and everyone who'd like some uh, career mode will probably be like, what the hell? Like, yeah, I, we, but here's, the thing. Here's, here's the thing with the way that EA have handled that this year, though, mm -hmm. uh, is that EA have kind of almost jumped the shark because they've got to give them a whole hell of a lot of love to career mode first to basically mm -hmm. stop. If they'd have come out and gone, here's Ultimate Teams news first, yeah. you would have had the offline crowd going, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa where's, all that, where's all that stuff? Like, yep. and now all of a sudden the offline crowd are going, oh my God, career mode is, looks amazing, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And now you've got the Ultimate Team goes, well, where's that stuff? And it's mm -hmm. like, don't worry, that will come. And it's, mm -hmm. and, you know, to, to point out things, uh, you know, and, and to at least try and put a slightly positive spin on, on how this like, whole thing is going to be at the moment. <laughs> is I'll point to kind of two games that kind of had kind of differences and how they kind of opened their game up and have kind of almost renovated their game and made it even better. So I know, you know, myself and Barry and Lazar at times have played a lot of Warzone. Mm. Warzone was derided when it first came out. I can't believe they're going down the Battle Royale route. This thing's stupid. It's not going to work. And now it turns out it's one of the most popular game modes out there. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, I can't, you know, you please can't do without it. The other game that I've just thought of in the back of my head is 
the, the changes the football manager made to their game. So the changes the football manager made to the game when they brought in online draft mm. and they brought in that connectivity. So, for example, yep. if KG, uh, I mean, I'm not sure who he supports. He may be a United Chelsea. fan. I mean, that's, that's normally no, the no. no US I'm, fans. I'm, I'm a, I'm a Chelsea fan. I was I was debating on, on wearing a Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for example, so for example, if 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 KG wants to do you know uh, set up an online league and me you, me Barry and, and KG are on at the same time, we can all link into our teams. Then we can all kind of be playing simultaneously at the same time. We'll all be in a Discord mm-hmm. call like yep. this. You can start talking transfers, and it becomes a whole different social experience. Much it's... like when you talked about clubs or pro clubs for EA. That there is an incredibly social experience because you get mates into a chat, yeah, and all of a sudden it becomes, oh, Barry's just absolutely smacked one over the bar, Baz, and yeah. then you've got eight it's people fun. roasting you. It's That's hilarious, the That's the and then when ball. stuff yeah. goes right, it's like an absolute riot because you just hear <laughs> eight people going mental that Barry's just buried one from thirty yards, like. But it's mm-hmm. such a different experience. I mean, I know that myself and Lazar are playing carp together. It's a very mm-hmm. similar experience when you had eFootball and you had the co-op mode and you had, you know, the ability to play together. Co-op mm-hmm. has been the sleeper hit for eFootball that yeah, they definitely. haven't really utilised. If they tapped into it, mm. and if they tapped yeah. into the 11 the B11 yeah. as well, that, that would leave those guys out. If they tapped into those two, all of a sudden it becomes a very, very different game. And mm. It becomes oh, a yeah. lot more social. So, you know, that would be that would be my kind of beam of light that's just poking through the end of the tunnel. That's one thing I wish about eFootball is I wish they would go and go more of that route where you're watching 11 v 11, right? Mm-hmm. Like like you're, you hit the, hit the nail on the head where it's the closest you can get to playing, going outside and playing real footy and playing with, with a team. And you have a specific role. You do this, you do that. You know what I mean? You might change up your tactics a little bit. Someone gets sent off. Everyone gives them, you know, gives them. Yeah. Stick and that. <laughs> you know, that's like, I would love for Like I, I, when pro clubs came out and, and foot came out and they started putting foot on, you know, on TV and they started broadcasting, you know, tournaments on YouTube. In my mind, I just kept thinking about that's cool, but I would much rather watch two, 22 players play. Mm against yeah. each other you know yeah. 11 11 v 11 just just watching you know teams and and seeing how teams work seeing how they they build their characters and and how they level up and, th- and seeing what their tactics and their strategy are and just like in my mind and like you're saying the, the banter on top of it is like the icing on the cake right like yeah. I'll, i'm the first to admit it the game play in pro clubs is not what keeps people around mm. no, it is no, 100%. fast it is ice skating it is like just like five foot three folks with purple <laughs> hair and gloves and crazy names, like all that <clears throat> crap aside, it's the the camaraderie, the sense of being in a team, the sense of yeah. I'm the striker, I've got to I've got to hold the line, I've got to hold up play, bring some of my other folks into it, and and just that that aspect of it is that's what makes that mode exciting, and mm-hmm. I wish that that Konami would take they they used to have it back in the day, it didn't work very well because the online tech just wasn't very yeah. good. But I wish that they would go down that route and try to focus on, you know, like eleven, like it's a team sport. Like it, everyone has a role. Appreciate the gameplay. You know what I mean? Just, just. I think that they like that, that's the thing. I think all the chat that's been coming out has been that like you know social aspect of us. You know that social hook to get you in where it's like. You're not going to load up the PS5 yourself because you're like, oh, I don't want to go on and play 1v1 co-op. But, you know, Wes, KG and Lazar are going on. I'll jump in with the boys. Like, yeah, that's what kind of keeps it. me playing Warzone the, a lot is yeah. it's more like you're playing with a group rather than going on to play it yourself. You know, that kind of way. Yeah, mm-hmm. 100%, 100%. Um, and I think that that like all the all the stuff that they've been talking about, like in the interviews and stuff has been about like the social aspect of it. So yeah. I think that they will surprise us in terms of how they integrate that in. I think there will be a couple of surprises with, you know, witty football. To yeah, I think I think there will be. I think that there I think that there there will be a couple of bits and pieces like that because I think that they now realize that if they are going down this route of free to play, free to play doesn't mean that the game can't make money. Do you know what I mean? It's like it doesn't right. it still costs the money to develop the game and to have a team working on it all the time with new content, new modes. They've already committed to bringing out Master League in the future or whatever they end up calling it. So like, 
you know, I mean, they're already on this path now. They can't go back from it. So yeah. people aren't going to play a free-to-play title just because it's free. They'll download yeah. it, they'll play it for a couple of hours, and then they'll go on to something else. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. just the way it is. And if it's, if it's sucks, it'll nowadays. get deleted. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. because there's, not, there's no, there's no, there's no commitment no... to it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing. You, if you spend 40, 50, 60, you know, 60 bucks on a game, you're going to at least, you know, you might wait for that first DLC to come out yeah. before if it's if, if it sucks at, at launch. But if it's free, delete. Yeah. It's gone. And move on. And that's it. And, and mm-hmm. like, that's the thing. I think that there will be a couple of, like, I think the, the pressure will be a good pressure where it will be like, well, you know, you have to keep retaining the player base because, yeah, there is an unlimited, you know, supply of new guys trying the game the whole time. But... You know, them guys aren't going to pump money in or time into the game. They'll just play it for a couple of hours and then go elsewhere to the next fad. You know, the next Fallout or Fall Guys or the next Fortnite or whatever it is. I mean, like, for you, Laza, right? We're not ignoring you there. You're being very, very patient and quiet. And <laughs> no, no, just, no for, I'd rather listen than talk, actually, because it's really interesting. And, yeah, I'll just jump in when I can. Yeah, but for you, I mean, like... <sighs> You've obviously speak to a lot of the, the, the pro guys. And again, this will be a small minority of players that are exceptional at PES and have been exceptional at PES for the last couple of years that, you know, doesn't apply to the regular guys like us. Well, Wes, you know, maybe a bit. But like for me, you know, my <laughs> skill base, my level of skill with PES probably died with PES 5. So like, you know, I wouldn't play PES competitively now. I would get smoked. But like for you, I mean like if Pez was to fully embrace that and as Wes said with no disrespect to Master League players and stuff I mean you're not you're kind of a new age Pez fan if you don't mind me saying that in the fact that yeah you know you you don't really care about Master League compared to maybe I'm not saying you don't care about the legacy of Pez and Master League and all that but it's the same way that you know you, you it's not the first game mode on your on your yeah like it's sheet, not right? it doesn't yeah, that's no, not what's yeah. going to sell yeah. the game to you <laughs> <laughs> on your team sheet i like that yeah <laughs> so i mean like for you for you like are what konami coming out and saying and like all the interviews saying they're going to in you know they're going to embrace you know like matchmaking and being able to play with your friends a lot quicker like social interaction and social integration quickening up how to get into a lobby compared to the, what, the way it is at the moment, which is a disaster. You know what I mean? That it takes so long to go from match to match, set up your team, your position. And like, is, is that like a very, like, is that a massive positive for you? Like, are you excited about that? Absolutely. Especially when we talk about esports. Uh, if we take example this year, well, the past two years of having the eFootball Pro and the eFootball Open, which, well, eFootball Open, which was accessible for all competitors who wanted to be part of that kind of, you know, becoming a pro player. Um, I, I'm sure we had, we saw some of the answers of, on, from the official eFootball that they said they're going to have a um, new matchmaking setting so you can mm-hmm. have a filter where it will check your area bases and your connection as well. I mean, you know, people who compete and, you know, want to be part of an, an official club, they want to play uh, against someone, you know, and w- whether you win or lose, they won't have good connection, a fair match, and then, you know, so, because so, sometimes even me, I feel like, you know, you go into a game and you're like, yes, I had, you know, a three-bar connection, I accepted the three-bar connection, why do I have to play when someone has, you know, one, a one-bar mm-hmm. connection? Yeah. How is so sudden that, you know, Pess is telling me that, okay, your opponent is, is you know, he's a gross stable connection. And then suddenly once we get into the, into the game, it's, it's completely unplay- unplayable. You know, why, why do we have to go through this route? And, I mean, we've seen 1v1 and 3v3 over the past two years. It, you know, nothing really changes in terms mm-hmm. of esports. It's the same thing again and again. There is no filter. You just literally go into a matchmaking window and you just pray that somehow your opponent will have a good connection mm. or good enough you know, that you can play the game, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, so one thing I would definitely want to see for next year, Barry, and guys, is just obviously, you know, being able to compete and win or lose against the player who deserves to win or, you know, to beat me or to lose against me. That's, that's, mm. and, and again, that's why, that's why a lot of people, um, we've seen that changes in FIFA. I, I think, because I, I, got, I got friends in, back in Greece who, who, do, who play FIFA more than PES, and they say to me, Laza, we feel like in PES, 
you know more often whether you lose to a good opponent or a bad one. Where mm. with pairs, sometimes you win and you're like, was it me or was yeah. it the game helping me? Like, you're not really sure. You know, we've all been there. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, no, it is, like there are definitely, I mean, when you play online, there's so many factors that are like online that, I mean, you don't, you know, that's like, I often say, I often talk about it like, you don't ever like losing online and that's a lot of the problem where it's like you know if we play each other and when it's like yeah you know laza you beat me or you know i spanked you laza you know could happen <laughs> could happen yeah yeah but like if that was the case i mean it's easy to accept it but when you're playing someone random it's very hard to actually text them and be like gg like you're you know much better than me or like whatever i mean you might get the odd yeah, time doing that but yeah. there is a bit of saltiness with losing like in yeah. in a game because you do take it personally like that it's you know that it's an achievement when you beat somebody I, you know yeah i think just, just just sorry to interrupt you barry just to come back onto this with uh with i think one big thing with pes is rating online rating mm. now i know people uh that literally told me laza when i play a ranked match if i lose i'm getting really annoyed but if i played with a player in a friendly match Win or lose, I don't mind. Yeah. And I think rating, online rating, is what keeps people obsessed with the game and like kind of, oh, I lost points. I need to play more matches to get back, you know, to get the yeah. points back. But then eventually they start losing and they get frustrated and they're like, something is wrong here. And that's where they lose the level of, should I play more games? Should I just stop, have a break and come back tomorrow? Mm. You know, it's, it's not my day. Maybe tomorrow will be my day. Yeah. Yeah, because in pairs at the moment, like in my club, you could, you could play 10 games win nine lose one and you're literally back to where you were yeah two i was hours gonna ago. say you've got like three or four hours of work just yeah down the tube. exactly you know and yeah. it's things like that where they, they obviously created the game mode without you know the logic behind it of well if somebody's sitting down you know winning nine games they should be they should be like a plus not a minus you know or not not yeah. breaking even you know what i mean and that's yeah. where they like i think they that's a big thing this year as well i mean kg like nowadays with games like there has to be in my opinion like a huge reward for you just spending your time playing it i mean it's no longer like going back to the days of like you know metal gear solid one or two back back years ago or resi one or two <laughs> or silent hills or any of those games where like the achievement you know or even something like gta 3 or vice city the achievement in it was like you know especially from from my personal opinion the achievement of it was like playing it finding something cool that happened and then telling your friends next day like you know in in real life or whatever in school or whatever it would be in college like playing halo you know like land mm. halo and all that sort of stuff yeah. it was more about the experience of what you were doing like with master league i mean you'd have you'd be bringing your ma your memory card to your friend's house and be like oh look at this guy <laughs> he's like 95 rated plugging it mm -hmm. in whereas now like I think it's so there's so much like information coming in all the time that like like yeah. I even do it myself. I'll be sitting down watching a movie and I'll be totally engrossed in a movie and then I'll be on Twitter as well. And it's like I'm not really totally engrossed in a the movie then because I'm on Twitter. So like yeah. <laughs> there has to be there has to be like a massive incentive for you to sit down and dedicate an hour to play rather than you know, and like Wes, yeah. I mean with FIFA, I mean that's obviously the case. And Warzone is the same, Fortnite, all those games. Mm -hmm. where you're like okay it wasn't my night as like laza was saying i played really poor but i unlocked a new gun or i unlocked a new like player or i like nearly yeah, hit this I'm objective or yeah, you know I, 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 mm -hmm. yeah like i i hit a new you know scoring record or whatever it is and it's like like mm -hmm. kg do you think that that's like putting a lot of pressure on konami this year with the free to play model that the content has to be not just like plentiful but it has to be rewarding like do you think that yes. that's something that people are kind of because i don't really see that many people talking about that i i think i think konami is setting themselves up to raise the bar high based on being a free-to-play model and because we all know that the free-to-play model is just aimed at getting people to play the game but like you were saying once you get to the game the game, the game has to be really good. The yeah. experience of it has to be really good. Whether you're an online player like Laz, then the connection has to be good. The matchmaking system has to have a good filter on it. You have to be able to have solid, solid connections. The, the match rating system has to be fair and logical and things like that. So there's, 
there's so much that you know that they have to kind of incorporate and they have to think about that's just outside of the actual game so outside of the actual gameplay right you mm. the gameplay is is you know Piz's old thing of the gameplay is king and things like that I, when, whenever they used to say that i would sit there and i'd be thinking to myself i'm like all right look at the end of the day it is all about the action on the, the virtual pitch yeah but it's an ex- it's it's an experience now everything that uh, about the game like like barry mentioned you know you're on you're watching a movie and you're on twitter Video games are are a big industry, and they're competing with TV. They're competing with movies. They're competing with you know other other avenues of entertainment. So in order for you to be fully engrossed in it, then yeah, the gameplay has to be good. The modes have to be good, and it has to give you some sense of fulfillment to where you want to load it back up the next yeah. day or in a couple of hours and things like that. And for a lot of people right now, it isn't. Yeah, with 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 uh with with Pez and and maybe even with you know with FIFA to some to some extent, but you know it just you just need to the game needs to be it needs to be a complete game and it needs to not only be a good game uh, gameplay wise, it also has to have really really good features and really really well thought out modes. And to honestly, that is the part that scares the hell out of me when it comes to Konami being really, really well thought out and being able to adapt on the fly. Like, like I said, I I play FIFA and I write a lot about FIFA for, for operation sports. And I can't even tell you what number patch they're on. They're on 19 or patch 20 for FIFA 21. It's, and in my mind, I'm like, that's crazy because that's a crazy amount of tinkering with the game. And that can be such a huge change from when the game releases. But it also shows their dedication, and, I, and I'll give Konami credit too, because Konami has been really good over the last two or three years at doing data packs and doing updates and mm. letting you know. They space them out a little bit more than EA because maybe they they try to stick more into it. Um, but you you have they have to continue doing that, but they also have to get ahead of it with their PR and things like that. And it's just there's just a lot of things that Konami does that just doesn't inspire confidence in me moving mm. forward when it comes to that side of the thing like i'm one of the people that i actually liked his 2021 like i i liked the, the gameplay i understand it you know it's got a lot of faults and we could yeah. we could talk about them and i'm sure Laz could probably talk about them for days as well um it's got a lot of faults but there's it, there's something in there that brings me back and that's what is needed for not only for for pez 2022 or eFootball, but just for the franchise moving forward and you know it, We'll see come come August or I don't even want to say come August because August we basically just get a come demo. Autumn, autumn. Yeah, autumn come, come autumn. Which, by the way, what the hell? Like, no one calls it autumn. Like, we, no. I don't know about you guys. No, over there, we but don't we call it fall. You call it fall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, call it we call fall. It we fall, can all, we yeah, do so. call it autumn actually. We do. It's a UK thing, isn't it? Kind of UK Ireland. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, it's just there's just so many unknowns and. You know, hopefully we get spoon fed a little bit of information from now until Gamescom. Yeah. I don't think we will. I think we'll kind of get those bits and pieces like we have over the last couple of weeks where like, you know, maybe Konami tries to get, behind, you know, clarify some stuff on their Twitter and releases a whole bunch of just stuff that they should have released before. And then we'll get some articles here and there. It, it kind of makes it hard covering the game because you're just like, all right, I don't know if this source is reliable. I don't <laughs> yeah. know where this yeah, information is yeah. coming from. I think from. we'll just like, probably get a big dump at like Gamescom and like, well, I hope not a natural <laughs> dump, yeah. but like an information dump where like <laughs> it'll just be very, you know, I'm expecting it to just be very to the point as in like, this is ABC, this is it. Yeah, the, and, the, the key yeah. word I'm looking for, the key word I'm looking for from Gamescom is clarity. Yeah, That's just clarify word. everything and just yeah. specify just exactly what it is. Like. Yeah. Clear yeah. route, and we're good to go. Yeah, like, I'm just, I mean, you know, I'm just so intrigued by just the. They're trying because the, Konami is trying to do something that EA hasn't even been able to yeah. do in terms of on the technology front. Yeah, and to it's me, huge. I just feel like they might be biting off more than they can chew. But I'm just, I just want to see how they pull it off. Mm. It, it's just, yeah. it's so, it's just, it, it keeps. I'll be honest with you, it keeps me engaged as just a fan like never mind all the writing bs like i'm i'm actively on twitter looking for like all right i I want to see if there's any information that i missed just just as a fan 
Yeah. But that's the way we'll it see. is though, man, with us all really. But, so, speaking yeah. of speaking of more bite him off more than they can chew. Um Barcelona, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> We got we 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 obviously we're we're gonna move it on to to transfers. We're gonna go to yeah. arguably probably the biggest transfer that could have ever happened, or at least in my lifetime has ever happened. Game changing. It, it dwarfs it dwarfs York to Man United for that way, <laughs> for, for an emotional tie for me. Um, Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona. Uh, it's, I mean, I, I I get I again I get it. I don't like it, but I understand why it's happening. Like it's, it's business, it's, man. It's a, it's That's a, what it is. It's. Uh, I mean, I've seen. I've seen people come out with the shout of, mm. "Oh well, he should just play for free," and mm. you know, if he loves the club so much. And I'm like, you let's can't. hold. hold let, let's let's pump the brakes for two minutes. Number <laughs> one. Number one. Barcelona have been poorly financially mismanaged in quite some time. Mm-hmm. You saw the, Years. the wages of Antoine Griezmann, the likes mm-hmm. of Rakitic that was getting paid, Pjanic, uh, and Titi. There's a reason why mm-hmm. Pjanic and Titi were offered free transfers in the summer. Mm. Like, yeah. Um, even if Messi were to pay for free, Barca would be nowhere near the target they'd need to hit for La Liga. Yeah. So, and and yeah. as most people have pointed out, there are only... And why should, one why should he even do that? Yeah. yeah. Like, why, yeah. Should, why should he play for free when it's obvious the club was just making terrible, not only financial moves, but terrible footballing moves mm. to complement him with players that didn't really fit or complement him with managers? So why should he then be like, all right, you know what? I've made your club so much money. I've been, yeah. I'm pretty much, me and, and Ronaldo are the fa- have been in the face of football for the last 15 years. Yeah, easily. So I should just throw you a bone and say, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go out there and I'm going to score, you know, 60 goals in the calendar year for, for free. Yeah. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man. Like, this is, this is, sports is like, they're a business. Like it is. That's these what are it comes their down to. It's these are their jobs. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, as, I as mean, romantic I and any... as it is, like, at the end of the day, it's all about money. Like, that's, yeah. That's what yeah. that's that's what that's what it is, and and they can say yeah. you know this and that or whatever. But mm-hmm. I mean, he probably did want to retire there, but at the end of the day, like yeah. it is it is business, and it just shows you how mm-hmm. things can change so quickly. I mean, look at look at Ronaldo with Real Madrid. You know what I mean? That like Ronaldo was at Real Madrid, and you know they got rid of over the last what five six years. I mean, they got rid of Ramos, Cassius, mm-hmm. like Ronaldo. Like, yeah, say Benzema you know, and Marcelo are the only survivors. That's pretty much, pretty much it, yeah. yeah. And Modric, I yeah, suppose, true. will be there. Yeah, but like Luca. But they they tried to get rid of Luca Modric last year, though. So yeah. it's like, and Cruz yeah, has it's, been it's, rumored it's, to be moving away as well. But like, yeah, it is a business. Yeah, I mean, it's grand with the winning and stuff. But at the end, was, you have to yeah. be rootless, like you know. I mean, well, I was gonna say when it, when it comes to a football thing, I can't remember the the famous US comedian. I'm sure KG will enlighten me. It goes back. <laughs> it goes back spot. to. It goes back to the what? What have you done for me lately? So it's basically yeah. Messi's gone and scored sixty goals already. Is he going to go and score another sixty? Probably not. No. I mean, I'm not being funny though. Compared to yeah. where, I mean, at the time of recording, it hasn't gone through yet. Yeah. It is widely it reported that he will be going to, to yeah. PSG, which is just yeah, it's like, mind blowing. Imagine what they're going to be like in, in FIFA and eFootball. Like they're just. I, I think it's just. They're... It's, it's it's it's, uncr- too, it's, it's literally the Harlem life. Globetrotters of, of football yeah. right now. <laughs> they're, they're a my club team. They're a foot team. Yeah. Yeah. Like they actually yeah. Yeah. You play somebody online and you see... I was going to say, PSG have loaded up the my club coins here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Messi, Mbappe, uh, Neymar... Then you go on the bench. You've got Icardi. You've got you know. Maria. Let, let them let yeah. Let them go out and get Paul Pogba too. Oh, and you yeah. you know you got Verratti. Oh, you got staying, Ramos. Man. Pogba's gonna stay. Oh, yeah. Donnarumma. I, per- I, I forgot about Donnarumma. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. It's essentially. It is essentially. It's the footballing equivalent of Thanos for the Infinity Gauntlet. That's literally <laughs> what's happening right now. They've literally gone. They've literally gone. Where have we got all the five best footballers yeah. in the world? Right there we go. There's the Infinity there Gauntlet. And yeah. we're still going to lose the Champions League finals to Bayern Munich. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> like, that's what. That's what's going to happen. Good How ladies, weird man. is it going to be when uh, when eFootball actually does come out and we see, you know, you see Messi because it, it happened what in twenty when when Neymar left. Neymar left Barca, he is, yeah. When he left, yeah, Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. the cover boy of Pez, and he was in the he was in the Barca shirt, mm-hmm. and but he was playing for like I feel like that's like that's when it's going to hit me. Yeah. Well, here's, when here's when the I thing. see him. Yeah, here's the here's the thing when you look at it. I mean, it's a it's a touch point. Just this very quick one. 
but you know the fact that Barry was mentioning about the fact that there's no physical sales, or at least at, at this point in time, there's no mm. physical sales. It means there's no cover star. Mm. So it's kind yeah. of like it's just a mute point now where people used to go, yeah. "Oh, who's going to be on the front?" And it's like, well, mm-hmm. actually, nobody is because it's, it's it's free to play. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You just have like one. a graphic, and I mean, I mean, <laughs> I know, I know that we're talking about transfers, and I feel like I need the floor for a good five yeah. minutes. We need here, to get to I the elephant to, in the room. I need, really. I need to get this off my chest because this, <laughs> this has been this has been on Shore my chest. Is yours. Right, Danny. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, listen. I, I'm, I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the line first with the fact that Grealish has gone. Right. I, 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 I love the fact that our CEO came out mm, literally as it cool. got announced. He came out and literally gave a six minute video, explained very thoroughly about what had happened and how it had got to that point. And it wasn't just, oh, we've just taken the money. It's like literally, it's a contract. It's a release clause. He's act- asked us to activate it, and therefore mm. we triggered it. What I love is the Villa recruitment policy that's gone behind it, mm. which is the fact that we have Championship Player of the Season, Emi Buendia, Buendia, who looks like an absolute yeah, show I, I can't don't think he went down last year with him. I thought for sure somebody was going to scoop him from uh, from. Well, he took, he, from he, took, he took a season He took a season because I think nobody nobody's willing to pay the price. Then when he's come back up, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's shocking that he's come back up and then took it on with us. You then take in the fact that we take Danny Ings came out of absolutely nowhere. Like literally mm-hmm. nobody yeah. was reporting it. Romano was caught cold. Literally, it mm-hmm. was just like Villa, tweet out, bang, welcome Danny Ings. I went, what what? Yeah. Like, I was literally yeah, on the we phone were... to my brother and I was like, Hold on, there's not even a rumor of this. What's going on? Like, <laughs> yeah. just so Danny Ings. We were trying on? to give you guys Tammy Abraham. We were like, come take Tammy. Yeah, we're gonna please, get please. You enjoyed that you enjoyed that championship season where he basically got <laughs> yeah. you up. Come and get him again. Yeah. No, um, and then, of course, and I think I think this is the part where a lot of people don't realise is the superstar that we have signed with Leon Bailey. Mm. I don't think people realise just yeah. how good he actually is. And fine, yeah. if he uses us as a stepping stone and he goes to like a major, like a superstar team in the future, That's fine. so be it. Yep. But I yeah. tell you something, for the two or three seasons that we may have him, we have got an absolute superstar on our hands. Not mm. to mention yeah. the fact that we still have Copper America winning... Emmy Martinez in goal, who loves yep. to just absolutely talk the head off of penalty takers, like just <laughs> mm-hmm. to make just to unsettle what he did to the Colombian penalty yeah. takers. How I many how many Arsenal fans do you think right now would trade Leno for straight swap Leno oh. for Martinez? I, I think every last one of them. I think I think there was a lot of Arsenal fans, some of which who we know, the likes of David Fish, the likes of Pirate. I'm sure uh, <laughs> who are guys within the community. I am sure uh-huh. that even at the time they were like, "Yo, we are making an error here." Like, because mm. at that latter stage, when being at Arsenal, he was getting a run of games. Mm. People saw yeah. how good he was, and then for him to get the season that he had last year, we've got Tyro Mings, who is potentially going to be our new captain. We've got Konza. Mm-hmm. We took Twanzebi on loan from from Man, Man United. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Ashley Young back. It kind of feels like it's two thousand eight again. I, I feel like I'm eighteen <laughs> again. Like, where's, I'm just where's like, Gabby? Yeah, Where's I need Gabby? Gabby, I need John Carew, I need Stuart Downing back John out of retirement, Gabby. and then we're good. Um, but, you know, as, as transfers go, the fact that Messi happened literally hours, or at least the, the announcement that Messi happened hours afterwards, completely stole the thunder of that, oh, it's a British transfer record, it's 100 mil. Mm, like, for, yeah, as a Villa has... fan, I am, I am very excited for our future. I mean, looking at some of the other transfers that have happened, I mean, the fact that Chelsea are re-signing Romelu Lukaku, Lukaku yeah. I'm like, I'm like, for starters, I'm like, <laughs> First of all, did you not understand the player that you had when you got him from Anderlecht? Granted, no, you, we did. I mean, you had, I mean, I will say this: you had Andre Villas-Boas as a manager at that point. I mean, we did. you know, the less said about that, yeah. the better. But he, the fact mm. that he is kind of, he, he's very much a striker who has just got a chip on his shoulder. Wherever he goes, he mm. has to prove himself. Prove like himself. he went to United, yeah. had to prove himself. Mm-hmm. Essentially, got sold and got bombed out of United. Was like fine, mm-hmm. picks up the chip, takes it to Inter, wins a title, and yeah. I'm like. Uh, mm-hmm. And then performs really well in you know in the Euros for Belgium. It's like Belgium. Yeah, and all right. of a sudden a you've player. got a superstar again. It's just it's superstars are moving everywhere. Like it's it's, yeah. it's crazy. I don't, don't know where it's going to end. <laughs> yeah, I think I think like I've I've seen a lot of people say this that Grealish was the transfer that it, even though it, it everyone kind of knew and heard the, the 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 rumors and the rumblings, 
it was the one that once it hit, everything else starts to fall mm, in yeah, place, yeah. right? Like Harry Kane starts picking up and then, you know, he misses a couple of trainings with Tottenham and everyone's like, oh, what's oh, going he's, on? He's made a big, he's made a big error there. He's made a yeah. very big error. Because you know, not it, only have you got Daniel Levy, who is one of the like worst. hardest negotiators <laughs> on planet Earth. Worst. It's like you probably easier getting blood out of a boulder, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> it's, it's I'm here, still bummed. He's, He's done, he's done terrible. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I'm still bummed that he didn't sell us Luka Modric back in 2009. Like, he was the stubborn, one. Stubborn that like, was. Mor- he was really Mourinho, stubborn. Mourinho said when he, because Mourinho went to Real Madrid right after. And, yeah. and that was, like, his first player that he had there. And, it, it, like, people didn't realize how good Luka Modric was. But he was just playing on some Spurs teams that just, you know, pre-Gareth Bale kind of exploding mm, yeah, and becoming, yeah. like, the, the superstar that, that he was. He, he, for, he, was you know, those... with, he was dealing with Pavlochenko as opposed to Harry Kane. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, he's just, you know, Michael Dawson back there in front of goal. You know, just, you know, just, just all Gazaniga in goal. And all, yeah, he's you know, got, he's got Esso and Cotto overlapping him at left back, yeah? Yeah, you know, Benoit. Oh, um, just all but, those things. But yeah, once once that Grealish transfer hit, I think I was just hoping that, like everyone knows, you know, it's an uh, international summer with the Copa America, with the Gold Cup here in the States, with, with the Euros over there. So, yeah. you know, the transfer window is kind of kind of mm. going to be, you know, late blooming to start with. But that one just like, it, I think it's just going to put the wheels in motion and you're just going to see it. But what's, what's going to be interesting is this, so many, so many England, like especially with Chelsea, they just have so, we have so much dead weight. And there's only so many. There's only but so many teams that can afford these players, like yeah. Bakayoko, Yoko, we like just, yeah, like uh, say, Zuma. You've, you've had about you've had about thirty five players water. on loan for about the last four <laughs> yeah. years. Like that's your, that's your own fault. Like Vitesse Arnhem have had a quality set of seasons with it, with them, you know. It's, but <laughs> it's been a good model for us though, business wise. Yeah, it has. We, we send them out like the kids. The kids more so. Like the failed transfers, like Danny Drinkwater, and we eat we eat those 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 wages and things like that. But the kids. <laughs> Like like you say, when we sent Tammy to to Villa, you know what I mean. Like he wasn't on big wages then, so you know we we send him there, he develops there, and then when he comes back and we sell him on, you know, we, yeah, we make a, we yeah, make a good yeah. profit on him. Yeah, I mean he, he comes back and then you buy Timo Werner because you don't think it's good enough, and then <laughs> yeah. and then, uh-huh. and then you find out Timo Werner. Werner's not good enough, and it's not like good enough. Oh, uh, and then we go and buy Luka Mon- like a uh, Lukaku, like yeah, man, you know. I mean, I, I wish I had a, you know a, an infinite money cheap like you had in GTA, you know. <laughs> Roman. It's like old school Chelsea, like 07, 08, when we used to have, <laughs> when we had Drogba and we'd be like, you know what? Drogba's not good enough. We're going to get Shevchenko. Shevchenko is not good enough. We're going to go out and we're going to get Fernando Torres. Torres. And Torres isn't good enough. And we're going to bring back Drogba. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, and then we're going to go and get Sammy Leto. And yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, <sighs> yeah. We're going to try so many, we're just going to try so many round pegs in square holes. And damn it, we're going to yeah. kick one in if it needs to. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, so Lukaku will be amazing. Meanwhile, meanwhile, United as well. Big Jaden. I mean, Big Jaden Sancho, Barry, talk to me. I mean, I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, that's just, what you guys are you know, It's just happened. It's just happened. Just happened. I, I think United I'm are going to do, United gonna do damage this season, I think. Yes. Yes, they are. If only I they can buy a manager. Serious damage. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Live rounds, <laughs> Ali? No, no, no. We will not have last one there. I think we're going to do damage. <laughs> I think I'm manager in a in a in a in a defensive mid. Yeah, if we just if we get be... a, if we get a proper like midfielder, I think we'll mm-hmm. I definitely give us a good chance like of winning the league this year. But yeah. I think Sancho, City, I think I mean, is the key City to is just that C- very fluid front line. Yeah. But People, I mean City are because, City are just stacked like, you know. It's hard to see past because, City uh, again. Because uh he barely like Southgate barely played him and because he played at Dortmund, I think people don't realize how freaking good yes. Sancho is. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, he, he is brilliant. Like Yeah, and he can play he can play wide, he mm. can play right behind the striker. He can he is he can come deep and, and he's progress a game the game ball. Game. Yeah, yeah no, he's, he's a, great, a he's a great he player. is a, an animal and he's only like what, 22, 23? Uh, 20, yeah, he's mid twenty yeah, twenty two or three I think. The same age as Rashford, I think it's yeah, I think the key component for you guys this year, though, again, took from a United standpoint, not that I'm a United fan, but I do have a, a best friend who is a United fan, <laughs> uh, is that you're going to have um, a fully pre-seasoned Edinson Cavani. Yeah. Because that guy mm-hmm. inside 18 yards, yeah. he's the guy yeah. that I would try with, with any type of ball into the box. If you've got Rashford who's on song, if you've got Sancho who hits the ground running, you've got Bruno yeah, in Greenwood. the line, you've got Greenwood, Greenwood. Yeah. You've got Pogba, I love Greenwood. if he did Alex to stay, you know, there's... 
There's yeah. all different types of kind of mechanisms. Van der Beek, who seems to have yeah. Daniel James, in there. yeah, Daniel James, yeah. if he develops, <laughs> you know, oh, you know. I mean, he laughs about it, but these are the same guys that were saying that William was their player of the year, and then he goes and absolutely stinks out the joint at Arsenal when they yeah. get rid of him. But yeah, you know, I think, here you go. I think I you need another for, player. Make you make another player for I mean, Laza, wait, Palk, talk to us about Palk because we know you're a massive. Oh Palk mate. Fan. Don't God, start me with this. They got handled. <laughs> they got handled the other night by uh, an oh, Irish who team. Who did they get oh, handled by an Irish team? <laughs> was it an Irish team? You got yeah. handled by an Irish team? We yeah, lo- yeah we, we played um, UEFA Conference League uh, third qualifying round. It was first leg last Tuesday and we lost 2-1 to Bohemians. Oh, the Bohemians. Ballad. Yeah. The boys. And, the boys. Um, on the yeah, we, we, we have to win now. We're playing on Thursday, second game. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to qualify. Because, I mean... Nah, the, we can't lose to them. We cannot lose to them again. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you should oh, be. The thing, the thing I wanted to come back to, uh, to the Messi topic was, how guys do you think? Well, will it affect? Will it impact? And how will it impact e football for next year? Because you know, may, I mean, we've seen Messi this year on all the trailers with the e football shirt, but not with the Barcelona one, where yeah. in. You know, in, in other previous titles, we've seen players wearing the, the official um, kit. I think, so, been, I think they've been rather smart with that because, of course, if there was any uncertainty, you don't mm-hmm. have to commit to a license. You only have to commit to yeah. a, a player likeness. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's very interchangeable. So you're not going to have the come down that FIFA had where they had Ronaldo on the front cover and then they had to exactly. splice, it, splice it all to be a Juve kit, even though everything was Real Madrid. Uh, th- mm-hmm. They've been smart on that stance. I mean, I don't think it's going to affect it too much because, again, they've not gone in their promo and in their branding and everything else. They've not gone club specific. They haven't gone, well, these are the colours that we're using and these are the colours of Man United or these are the colours of Juventus or these are the colours of Barcelona. Uh, they've just gone with, well, you saw Messi mm-hmm. and you saw Neymar and you saw them in a generic kit, which yeah, is our kit. Reason, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think I think on that stance they've been quite smart and they've covered themselves. I think. Yeah. Does it? Do you think it changes the the dynamic in trying to elevate PSG? I mean, obviously it elevates PSG as a as a brand, but do you think that translate translates into the game as a partnership? Because it's going to be interesting because there's a whole generation of fans that they see Messi and Barcelona is what they think of. Mm, and yeah. that's just that natural, uh, that, that natural, you know, one, two combination, but it's not going to be like that anymore. And, yeah. and they might, they might not remember the days of like, you know, the, the Ronaldo of Ricard of, of Guardiola, the player. And, you know, some of those great, you know, yeah, great yeah, players yeah. that, that kind of came before Messi that kind of put Barcelona, you know, on that, that took them to that, that perch where Messi kind of, and you know, and a lot of other players too, because I mean, PK, you know, yeah, I was gonna Zabi, say, no, no one's, yeah, no one's quite all those Harry Stoichkov in there, yeah. in their pants, <laughs> exactly. in the break, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. exactly, great white, no, those good guys that they got now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, what do you, what do you all think about that? Do you think that PSG becomes a, a another global partner of, of PES? Because I don't think they are, they're, they're licensed and their stadium, Park de Prince, is in FIFA, mm. but they're not a official partner like uh like a juventus is in in pez mm. or a barcelona is in pez i think if ea is smart about it they'll just go straight after yeah it'll go straight like it, yeah because, yeah because it's it's not even just a it's for me it, if i was looking at it from a standpoint of either game mm-hmm. by the way if i was either game i'd be making overtures right now because mm-hmm. like we've just run through they've got touchstones in pretty much every country if you look at their starting mm-hmm. lineup you've got an italian goalkeeper You've got yep. an Argentinian right back. You've got a Spanish centre half. You've got a French centre half. You then in midfield, mm-hmm. you've got another Italian in midfield yep. in Ferrari. You've then right side, you've got a Brazilian. Left side, Argentinian. You've got the French superstar that is there forward. Like there's, FIFA cover there's, boy too. Yeah, mm. FIFA cover boy yeah. as well. It's an easy mm-hmm. transition in, and and it it would make logical sense for somebody to go. Actually, let's just stick a stamp on them because, again, the content you mm-hmm. could do if you're going down the content road that you could do with these guys yeah. is limitless because yeah. there's so many different dynamics. I mean, the fact that we've got 
and again, in my lifetime, you've got Sergio Ramos and Lionel Messi on the same team. It yeah. feels, it feels like <laughs> it, best of friends, it feels, man. it feels like you know that part in Batman versus Superman where they go Martha, and mm. it's like, wait, what? And it's like they've suddenly realised that they're now friends, they're now and friends. it's like it just feels weird. Uh-huh. Like it just feels yeah. weird. Um, yeah, but it's going to be hella uh, interesting. It's crazy. What I wouldn't give to see what? a couple of those training sessions. Yeah, oh, the just trying to put him through Messi first training mm-hmm. session, <laughs> and pa- Pochettino just yelling, "Just take this, take it easy on yeah. Messi." Like, let, let, let. Messi just go easy out. on him. Messi just comes out wrapped in pillows just to run, <laughs> just run through his drills. Yeah, I mean it's 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 going to be a crazy year, I think, for everything, real football and video game and football. Fans so, back, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's going to be full capacity in England, isn't it, for when it launch when the new season starts? So, yep. Yeah. I mean, boys, we'll leave it there. Um, it's been a great chat, great football chat as well, as usual. Um, appreciate you all coming on. And hopefully, yeah, I mean, Wes, we're probably going to have, well, I mean, hopefully games come, what, it's like two weeks away? Yeah, like yeah. 10 day, 15 days away. So um, hopefully we'll have a bit game, more news. Games from Watch Along? Yeah, maybe, yeah. That could be a part. <laughs> well, I mean, we did get it confirmed. They did confirm that it was going to be at Gamescom today. With well, UVO, you it, so uh, yeah, that's the two games we're we'll going to be up, showing. We'll have to drag up the uh, drag up the video feed and try and figure out how to do a live one. Yeah, man, we're def- no, we no, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it. <laughs> You're not that old. You're not that yeah, old. We know how to work a PC. I'll look up a YouTube <laughs> tutorial. Or but uh, yeah, boys, we'll end it there. Um, and appreciate you coming on again, KG and and Liza and Wes. Thanks for having us. You know, I mean, you're always thank you. You're Pleasure always as always. So, yeah, I mean, it's been good crack. But uh, yeah, make sure and check us out on YouTube or on SoundCloud, um, whichever you want to listen to our, the audio or else the video or a mixture of both or whatever. And we will be back when we're back. I mean, we probably probably won't be back next week, but maybe maybe we will. Who knows? So yeah, we'll see if there's any new information, which, you know, let's be honest, there could be or there mightn't be. So we don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll have you covered and uh, make sure and check out KG stuff on Operation Sports. It's well worth it. He's well worth a follow on Twitter as well, even if he is a Chelsea fan. And Laza. Someone's Checks got in the support. mail. Yeah. Someone's got support him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, boys. Um, thanks for coming on, as, as I said, lastly. And uh, yeah, we will talk to you when we talk to you. And that's it from me. I'll let the boys say their good looks. And, Peace yeah. out, everyone. See you next time. Playing See you guys. And thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Pez Universe, man. You guys have made Pez a better game and you've opened up a lot of doors and, and exposed it to a lot of people behind all the good work that you all have done with your option files and things like that so just as a, as a PES fan and someone who's used your option files and uses them all the time I just have to say just thank you and for all, all that you do because people I don't think people realize how much work it is to actually go through an edit like I edited a team one time and I was like F this I'll just wait for Barry and those guys to, <laughs> <laughs> to finish doing it I don't, I don't have man. time to do all this stuff but Thank you guys. Uh, really appreciate it, and looking forward to uh, you know what, what you guys have in store for 2022. Thanks. Man. Thankfully, we got edit mode. Once we got edit mode in there, I was like, Yeah, we're it's in good coming. Hands. It's coming so. some stage. We've been told. So yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> appreciate the, the love of you, but uh, yeah. All right, boys. We will talk to you later. And girls, good luck. <laughs>